Hey, what's up everybody? It's Kevin here. Welcome to my channel. And uh, I'm going to a wedding tonight and it's for Taylor and Adam. And it's a really cool venue. We're going to the Dayton Art Institute, which is a beautiful place. I've been there before as a patron, you know, to visit the art museum, but I've never been there to DJ. So I'm really stoked. Um, they actually are getting married in this uh, like courtyard and uh, it's called the Cloister. And uh, they're also, uh, the reception is just in a beautiful room. And it's just, the vibes in there are just great. It's like historic and it's kind of, I don't know, kind of Celtic a little bit with some of the, the artwork and the stonework and things. Anyway, it's beautiful. I've got the car loaded up here and uh, you know, we're, we're headed up to the venue. As soon as I get in, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys around and show you what I'm working with tonight. You ever, um, you know, like, <laughs> have trouble finding the entrance to a place. Right now I'm cruising around trying to find the back, the back entrance where I know there's a there's a loading dock. And uh, my contact at the venue told me about, you know, the loading dock, showed me the freight elevator. When I, uh, when I was at rehearsal last night, I kind of, you know, spotted it, but I didn't see the, the rear, you know what I mean? Like where the actual, uh, dock is so just cruising around trying to find this this dock um, for this venue yeah oh yeah I found it it's kind of a it's like they're doing some work back here but anyway loading dock you guys okay so look at this stained glass window okay okay check it out this is where I'm gonna DJ the reception okay check it out I'm coming out of this little hobbit door look at this door it's great. All right, check out this place. Look at this. It's beautiful. Here's my backdrop. Right here. It's so great. So I'm like in this back room, little storage area, and they have like wedding supplies and stuff. Table numbers. Look at this. CDs. Very classic. I mean, what's on here? Level mix. Beethoven, yes. Probably not just for weddings, probably just for the museum vibe. Microphones, batteries. Yo. Yes. Nice. So this is a museum, obviously. And uh, check this out, they have a Monet. Pretty cool. Very cool. I mean, is that a thumb? Here comes the drop. <laughs> Dropping that fire on the dance floor right there. <laughs> After three gigs in one weekend. <laughs> uh... Sir, could you please play some Taylor Swift? They desperately need some tunes. Oh, hey, here's where the ceremony is going to be. Awesome. Ah, oh, too much Nickelback. <laughs> All right, so here's the place we're in. This is where the reception will be, dinner, dancing, etc. Uh, beautiful big room and uh, okay so I'll show you what I'm working with so here's my Danny Max Infinity Booth DDJ 1000 um, my mainstay controller there my MacBook Pro um, and you can kind of see I've got these JBL SRX's here so I've got two of these and I was a little worried about echo in this room, but I just did sound check. And um, actually, as long as you're within the perimeter of the, I don't know if this, this isn't quite an octagon, or maybe it is an octagon. If you're in the perimeter of, of this tile here, the yellowish tile, it sounds really good. Um, behind the speakers, like on this gray slate, like in this back area, there's some echo for sure. Um, 
but mostly it'll just be me back here. <laughs> um, and I decided to put my speakers up closer to the dance floor. Obviously, I'm I'm uh, negotiating these tables that are right in my way, but uh, I think it'll be okay. Uh, if I do have a problem with echo later, what I plan to do is take an extra speaker, a fill speaker, and put it on this side of the room such that it will cut down on the echo experience for most of the people at the tables. But just look at this place, it's beautiful. It's beautiful and I love that we're right in the museum so I can kind of, you know, ex walk around and explore. Um, let's see, did I talk about my whole setup? Oh, I've got my wash effects hexes up here. Um, those are a mainstay for me as well. I control those with those wireless donors connected to my WMX1 Wolf Mix that I love. And of course you guys have seen in the past, if you follow my channel, I've got all my pre-programmed presets here uh, for the different light shows and such. So I like to interact with, with my music uh, and, and, you know, create my own light shows as I go. But yeah, this is the setup for tonight and I'll uh, show you where the ceremony is. All right, this is the cloister. This is where uh, the ceremony will be. And uh, you can kind of see it's another octagon shaped area. Very cool, very cool. We've got like some statues along the outer perimeter and then just cool fountain, cool trees. And, and uh, these gates are freaking awesome. Rod irons, it's beautiful. So, any case, uh, this is where we're setting up for ceremony, and you can see my rig here in the back. And I'm playing a little bit of double duty today. Um, I'm doing, oh, that's cool. I like those little things. Um, also, look at this, a little ring catcher. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about what I got going on here. This is my GBL. Um, column array and I've got this shark fin directional antenna on top and my mic receivers down here this is my typical setup and what I'm doing today here is I am playing double duty I'm actually coordinating the groomsmen basically leaving out of this door here they're gonna all line up here and I'm gonna run over and kind of get them lined up and then I'm going to cue them to go ahead and process over to the uh, where the ceremony will be held. And then all the bridesmaids and the bride herself will be coming out of this, these big double doors up in the center. And that'll be cued by the person who's kind of running the show here. But I'm kind of helping her out because she's by herself. So any case, I of course go through my process and I'll show you of, you know, I go through this, um, better set down some mics. I go through a group scan, which is under my frequency menu, I can go group scan. And if I click that, what happens is um, all three of these uh, actual receivers are connected by a Cat5 cable, a network cable. So essentially um, one scan for the group will scan frequencies in the area and make sure that uh, you know they're clear. And then I click a button and it will assign a frequency to each one, all three. Okay, then I take each of my three mics, I got two laughs, one handheld, and I go, I sync, hold the mic up to the IR and it syncs up. I sync this one, the IR is over here because this is a dual unit. So I sync and then I sync. So then I have two mics, uh, two laughs and one handheld and I'm ready to go. And of course, those have uh, in the back, I have XLR cables that come in to the mixer portion of my JBL. And then uh, I power these, by the way, through this little halo bolt. I think I found out this, found this out by, I don't know, DJ Woo Pig maybe, or uh, not sure. Um, but anyway, uh, that's been great. And then of course, for actual music, I've got a here, a little mini three and a half millimeter cord, and that plugs into my MacBook, which is in that gray bag. And I don't usually get that out until it's time for Prelude. I did do a sound check real quick. Basically, I go up to the front where the folks will be and do my mic check. Did that and um, everything sounds great. And of course, check the music as well. Uh, that sounded great. Yo, I'm all dressed, but uh, 
I was coming out here to check on stuff. It looks like it might rain. I don't know. I'm just gonna check the forecast. <laughs> okay, so it is gonna rain. Um, I guess it's gonna be like, it, they said light rain, so uh, it shouldn't be too bad, but you know, we got we can't be getting our stuff wet. So I brought everything under the cover here, which should be okay. I still have pretty good line of sight through this tree line to the front. You know, I'm sure I can finagle a good spot here. And if it if there's a break in the rain, I can I can squeeze out into the grass area, you know, like where I was before. But geez. Ah, don't like rain. It's our enemy. All right, so I'm out of the rain, I'm undercover. So you guys see these little things? Okay, these are the uh, in-ear monitors, okay? So they're Ultimate Ears version 11 Pros. And uh, I love them, I love them. They're, you know, <laughs> they're like molded uh, to my ear. I went to a Miracle Ear place and, uh, <laughs> you know, for hearing aids. They took a mold of my ear and they sent the, the impressions. Uh, they gave me the impressions. I sent them in a box to Ultimate Ears and then they made a 3D model of them and then made these guys, okay? Um, anyway, I bought the version with the little plate so you can, this little Smile Stones logo, that's like an interchangeable plate that you can take off and you can buy like extra plates. Anyway, I love these things. They are really game changers for me because I was, uh, I was, you know, I had a little Beats pill, and that thing was good as a monitor, but, but you know, it wasn't, it didn't give me any low end, and it was just, I had to have it up really loud, it was slightly overdriven in most situations, and I got by with that for years, um, but I went ahead and got these, and I'm thinking it's gonna really help me with saving my hearing, etc. cetera, um, so I'm, I'm pumped about it, but I will say, um, not a lot of DJs use these, they, obviously are using monitors that they just point at themselves or in some cases they're using their headphones for you know for that but uh most cases i think people are using booth monitors uh you gotta have some sort of monitor because you gotta you, you can't let sound as sound leaves the speaker and goes out and bounces back to you there is a delay and if you don't have some sort of monitor a uh, direct audio source pointed at you to your ear you are going to be off when you try to mix. You're not going to be able to hear the nuance and the, the exact timing of things. So definitely need some sort of monitor, but uh, these guys, I would say probably not a lot of DJs are using them. I mean, I know uh, some folks use them, like maybe Joe Bunn, um, some of the, you know, DJ heroes from YouTube and whatnot, uh, Mojax, but um, I, I will never go back. I, I love these things but I'm, I wouldn't endorse them to everyone. Like, I don't think they're for everybody. Um, so I was just talking to another DJ actually and saying like, I think probably like 1% of DJs use these. I'm not saying like I'm top 1% or anything like that. I'm just saying like, I don't think a lot of DJs use them and I don't think they're necessary, but I do think they can help save your hearing. And they're really clutch too, because the ultimate ears, they come with a little tiny, I don't know if you can even see it. There's like a little porthole at the bottom probably can't see it, but they drill a little porthole in it for a couple extra bucks. And that allows me to hear people come up and give me requests, which is really clutch. So even though I've got a, like a sealed, you know, I can't hear anything with these in, like I can't hear ambient noise. But if you turn down the source on your mixer, you know, like I'm just using the headphone um, jack. So I turn down the source, my headphone audio, and then boom, I can hear clear as day people coming up to me. I think uh, DJ Rachel had a, a video of, of showing that off. And that was really cool. And that uh, that's true, that's, that it works. And I love it. So in any case, um, oh, and also uh, this DJ that was talking to me about these asked, hey, do you do you need a wireless transmitter and a, a body pack? And I, I don't think so. I just use, I have like a little, a little X, a little three and a half millimeter. And it's like got a little female. So I just like extend, cause these are just like regular headphones, okay? And I got it running down my back of my shirt and then I got it coming out of my belt loop and I kind of, you know, put it through my belt loop to give some tension. And then I just connect it with this. So I can step away from my mixing board and I can like, you know, do whatever. And if I need to pop, I can pop it off. You know, I can, this is a quick breakaway, pop, pop it off and then walk around, walk around, do something, come back to 
my station and then plug back in. Without removing these, I don't have to take them. Obviously, I don't take it out of my shirt, but I can just pop these out too if I need to, but I don't really need to. So in any case, just a, a little word on in-ear monitors. Okay, they're married. I've walked so many steps. <laughs> there are so many steps in this place, up and down the hill in the front.
A marriage ceremony represents one of life's greatest commitments. Marriage is a mighty endeavor. It calls us to share the best of our lives. It inspires our deepest motivations when the happiness of another person is essential to our own happiness. Do you take this woman to be your wife, to live together in holy matrimony, to love her and honor her, to comfort her and to keep her in sickness and in health, forsake all others as long as you go home? I do. Taylor, do you take this man to be your husband, to live together in holy matrimony, to love him, to honor him, to comfort him, and to keep him in sickness, health, forsake others as long as you both are? I do. Rings, rings. Place this right on here. I'm going to do it. I'd like to invite the mother to come.
I mean, I very much appreciate all the advice that she's given me. Um, tears have been shed, laughter has been had, many and many at late night and rum. <laughs> For those who don't know me, uh, I'm the best man and the younger brother to Taylor, and now uh, brother-in-law to Adam. I love you, and thank you for everything you've done, and that you're doing well with it. So let's raise our glasses to this fine couple. We love you both, and here's you for us.
Okay, so we are the last ones here. Um, <laughs> it's kind of cleaned up partially, you know, all the linens are off the tables, etc. And then, of course, I'm in um, a version of breaking down, so kind of in the in the process. Um, everybody had a great time. They all uh, came by, and the parents, and of course the couple, they were very happy. Uh, we had a lot of fun. You probably saw from the footage um, from the gig log. Um, and the uh, video that I produced, uh, you know, produced for the couple and uh, included. It was a good, good event. It was a little hard to get folks started in terms of um, dancing. Uh, I had a lot of, I think, people with different kind of, you know, music tastes. And that's always, you know, you have folks that usually there's a pocket or like a Venn diagram, if you will. Oh, like people's tastes and then weddings you try to hit that center point where you're gonna get a lot of people you're gonna kind of maximize um, people's excitement and enjoyment um, with the most people you know to attract the most people but you know sometimes it's hard because you know the couple and other people have like very specific tastes and you know but that's our job as a DJ to try to um, you know, maybe drop in some of those gems, especially for the couple, because this couple had some really, you know, specific tastes, and I think we we nailed it. I think we we nailed it, and uh, I think we did okay. So anyway, I'm signing off. I'm gonna pack up and then uh, get out of here and go home. So thanks for watching my gig log. See you guys.